right, I'm building myself a new forge for blacksmithing, and uh, the first step in building this forge was to find the right pieces of junk to build it out of. I found this um, spiral wrapped pipe that was, I think, a cut off piece that was being used as a culvert, and um, it was just laying out in the woods. I kind of rescued it. And right here I'm using an old uh, worn out belt for my belt grinder that I cut. And I'm just using that to wrap around so that I can mark a straight line around it so that I can use uh, the angle grinder and get something that's close to a cut, a straight cut. This piece of junk here is actually uh, the guts of a um, booster heater for a commercial dishwasher. It's a, Basically, it's a water heater that has a three-phase, and hot water came into it, and then it came out of it very hot water. Um, and it didn't work, so we're scrapping it out. So I have this great little stand that this tank was on. I originally considered using the tank, but it was like, Three-eighths of an inch thick steel and then glass line. And it was just too much trouble to try and get cut up. So that's when I went and found the piece of pipe out in the woods. Uh, but it has these nice little straps in the stand that I cut this piece of pipe. fits just perfectly in it. And I'll be able to strap it all down and make a nice neat little stand out of it. And the little shelf on the front where the electronics were is almost a perfect width for a fire brick. So I'm using uh, some 10-pound ceramic insulation here, uh, ceramic wool insulation, and it's rated for 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll use two layers of this in the forge, so it'll actually be two inches thick all the way around. Well, nominally two inches thick, it actually wound up a little thicker than that with some fluff. Uh, but that'll insulate the forge really well so it doesn't get hot on the outside as much. It still gets hot up by the burners because um, there's still some metal kind of exposed around the burner and of course the burner goes through it but I can just cut it with some big heavy scissors that I have and when you're working with this stuff if you ever use this it is a very much a necessity to wear a respirator or some sort of uh, respiratory protection and probably gloves and everything else that you can possibly use to keep it off you because a real fine dust comes off of this stuff that's actually ceramic fibers and it gets much worse after it's been heated after you've used it in a forge so if you're ever relining a forge that's made out of this it's much worse but it's pretty bad even just cutting this stuff I noticed that there was a fine powder all over the place and you don't want to breathe that in that is a terrible thing to have in your lungs but I pretty much just rough cut it and fit it in place, marked where the burners were going to be. And then I pull it back out and I'll cut it off to the exact size it needs to be. And then I'll just use a knife to cut out a mostly round hole where the burners go through the side of the, the case. And I didn't show on film, um, but I used a hole saw to drill the, the holes through the side of the pipe and then I just welded on some um, one inch coupling pieces that I'll use to hold a one inch pipe nipple and that'll hold the three quarter inch burner that goes through it. I'll explain that a little bit more later. Then I'm gonna rigidize it. This is actually what makes it safe to use. Um, you spray it with this rigidizer and then when this dries it hardens up and it makes it uh, like a stiff uh, inner surface and technically I think you can use the forge with just rigidized I would like to cover this stuff with uh, a refractory as well because while it's great insulation it's not very durable all by itself But then I'm going to use some actual uh, refractory inside as well on this forge. I'm going to use, um, this is a bubble alumina, it's called, which is a castable refractory. And I'm just going to use it up on the walls, on uh, about three inches or so up each wall 
on the forge. So I've got something that's not as easy to uh, poke a hole in as just the rigidized wool would be. Just to make it a little easier and a little bit more durable because I know that I have a tendency to not pay attention to where I shove things into the forge sometimes when I'm working. And then I'm also going to use a coating all over every bit of the wool that's um, made to reflect uh, infrared heat back into the forge. Um, I don't remember exactly what this one is called. It's something I found that's similar to a big name brand of it, but it's not. Um, and it just goes on, you mix it like a thick paint. They describe it as like sour cream and you just put it on with a paintbrush. Okay, now while this is drying um, and curing, I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk a little bit about what's going on here. I've got these fire bricks inside. These are hard fire bricks, which means there's gonna be a, a big heat mass there. It's gonna take a while to warm up each time I warm up the forge. I could have used a different refractory in there. I've got some castable I would thought about using, but I can just change these out easily and I've got a bunch of them. So I just went ahead and shoved those in there. In the future, I may wind up changing that, but I can pull these out and change them. I've got a full one in the back and I've got one here that I cut off. Um, you can just score it real deep with a cutoff wheel and then hit it with a cold chisel and it breaks pretty easily. Uh, mostly along that line. Anyway, I, I cut it off to fit that in and oddly, the piece that I cut off of it, and a full fire brick, fit just about perfectly across here. So that's the shelf that I've got in front. A couple more fire bricks, if I want to block off the front. Some, at least. You don't want to block it off entirely. You, uh, which has to do with the type of burners that I have on here. And then I've also welded a shelf on the back that I'll put two more fire bricks on to make back doors on the porch. And that shelf on the back is just made out of a piece of angle iron. I think it's actually a stainless angle iron, about two and a half inches on each side, I think. And I've cut a notch in it, so when I want to pass something through the forge and out the back, if it's something long, I'll be able to reach out through that notch. And then I've just got a couple more fire bricks here that I can use to close off the back of the forge if I want to. And again, I probably won't close it off entirely uh, because this type of forge does need to breathe. I might close the back off entirely and then leave the front wide open, something like that. But there has to be airflow for this forge to work. And the reason I keep saying that I need airflow for this type of forge to work is because I'm using naturally aspirated burners. Uh, what that means is I don't have a forced air pushing air in here with the propane. I have a small orifice in there. In this case, it's a 0 .035 MIG tip that's been ground down just a little bit, and then the burr was cleaned off from grinding it down. And that makes a jet, and that high-speed jet of propane coming in drags the air in with it and that's what mixes the air in these tubes um, this is what's referred to on uh, knife forums and blacksmith forums as a frosty tea burner because the original designer of it his screen name is frosty um, and it's a very simple concept it's pretty much just plumbing pipe for gas that's made for handling gas uh, plumbed in until you get to uh, an eighth inch pipe nipple and inside that eighth inch pipe nipple you can thread it and a MIG tip will thread into it and then like I said you just grind the MIG tip down a little bit clean it out to where you've got a full thing and add on about a six inch long piece of three quarter inch black iron pipe in this case there's different sizes um, the better way to do this is not to use this bushing but to get a one inch by one inch by three quarter T and then go directly onto the pipe. I've got this bushing in here instead which can really cause problems because it's never exactly straight. And you really need to get this to where that MIG tip is aimed as straight down the center of that pipe as possible for it to burn right. It worked out this time, but it's not gonna work every time. So it takes some fiddling to get it to work. Um, otherwise, it's just a ball valve to shut off propane here, and then there's a regulator on the tank. 
Um, and I found these one inch pipe nipples and one inch couplings. I welded the couplings to the side of the forge. Of course there's a hole drilled into the side of the pipe there for that to weld onto. And this coupling is just big enough that that three quarter inch pipe slides down it. And I drilled and tapped it for a quarter by 20 bolt that I used as a set screw to hold that in place. So that's what holds the two burners on. And of course, as mentioned, uh, this is a higher pressure regulator for specifically for things that use a lot of propane like this, like forges and so on. So you can't use just a barbecue grill regulator or a household regulator. They're set to way too little propane. They're like 12 inches of water column, which is only like 0.4 PSI, not even a half of a PSI. Uh, whereas this will probably run really well at about 5 PSI or so. I haven't gotten it, of course, done yet, so I can't tell you exactly what it's going to run at. But that's just a quick guess. That's where I'm going to start, and then I'll adjust from there uh, to find out exactly what I need to get the temperatures that I need. I've been running it pretty consistently on my test fires at about 2.5 to 3 PSI, and it seems to work really well there. But I don't think it'll get up to like forge welding temperatures at those.